What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and I am here today with the review for The Real Housewives of New York season 13 episode 7. I think it was titled Electile Dysfunction. Um, so you guys, before we get into the review, if you guys are watching this video or any other review on the channel and you ain't subscribed, stop taking me out on a date. And at the end of the day, when they slide that bill on the table, I'm paying for it. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop any videos. And um, what was I about to say? Share this video. Oh, I lose my train of thought sometimes. Um, yeah, but you guys, so without further ado, let's talk about Real Housewives of New York City. Yeah. So with the Real Housewives of New York City, the episode picked up where we left off. You guys remember the last episode, Heather, Leah, Bus, Heather called Leah a bitch. Leah hit Heather with flowers. And that was where we ended. And you remember Lou went inside the house to get Leah's hula hoops for her. So Heather tells Leah, you don't scare me. Because she went back in the house and said, you don't scare me. Interesting words from Heather. Because from what I heard during, you know, what I heard about them during filming is Heather stopped filming the show because she couldn't get along with Leah. But hey, who am I? But Leah decides that, you know, she's going to go to the party. And Leah, in the, in, in the sprinter, she asked Ebony, like, when you talk to Heather, do you think things could have been misconstrued with what you said? And, you know, Ebony asked her, well, did you say such and such? And Heather says, no, I didn't. So Ebony was like, you know what? That's my bad then. And Leah does end up apologizing to Heather. And I was like, oh, wow, Leah apologized. I didn't expect that. So then we get to the pageant. <laughs> Ramona, 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 Ramona. Ramona is an interesting one to say the least. So you guys will know Ramona doesn't like to hear, you know, sex talk. She doesn't like to hear the D word, the C word, the P word, the V word. Well, penis and vagina. She don't like to hear that. And then, you know, the other two, the D and the P word. She doesn't like to hear those two words mentioned. But at this pageant, she's talking about showing cleavage. I'm like, Ramona, you really got to pick and choose. Like you want to be a, you're, you are a true hypocrite, Ramona. Like, a true hypocrite so in the pageant they display their talents Ramona's you know she has these weights that she's lifting you know she's lifting these weights could have done without seeing that and then she gets down and does 40 push-ups so they say Heather <clears throat> she did a cheer be aggressive be be aggressive where did that come from bring it on Oh, God, I know every scene from that movie, Bring It On. I was about to say, because I was like, where did that come from? It's from Bring It On. Be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. I'm sorry, you guys. I know that movie because I can see them scenes. I can I definitely see that girl that hopped on the table that was flirting with Jan when Jan laid back and fell. Can you tell that I know that movie? I've watched that movie so many times. Like I said, I know. Of, of the movies that I've watched a lot that I know every scene for, Bring It On is one of them, and Friday is Friday, and Friday at the next is the next. Actually, Friday, <laughs> I got two DVDs of Friday. Funny story, got two DVDs of Friday. I have to buy two because the first one, it skipped. It skipped the entire movie now. Like, I can't even watch it because it skipped so much because I wore it out. My second one, I have a word out. Oh, actually, I got three copies of it. I have three. I got the copy that I bought. Then I got the Blu-ray that I bought with it, set it off, and don't be a menace in there. And then I got a third copy from one job that I worked at Hertz. Someone left it in the DVD player in one of the vans. They never came back for it. I'm like, oh, my God, that's God telling me to take this. <laughs> but, yeah, back to the show. Ebony... Uh, uh, Ebony, I really like you. I'm enjoying you. But this spoken word that you did, the spoken word poem about black women in front of these white women, I don't even care about the white women. It made me uncomfortable. Just saying. Leah. Leah did her hula hoops. She, she struggled at first, but she, she managed to pull through with it. Then Sonya was a mime. Can you guys tell me what Sonya was doing? 
because I didn't I didn't understand what it was. And they said what she was doing, but they bleeped it out. So I don't know necessarily what Sonya won. So the people who were the runner-ups and the winner, the second runner-up was Ebony. First runner-up was Lou, and the winner was Leah. All right, you guys, so I'm going to move on. All right, you guys, so bear with me with this scene. I'm gonna do everything I can not to get emotional during the scene and not to cry because I just knew full well what Leah was going through. So everyone is packing to head back home. Now, mind you, Leah's already left. She left earlier so that way she can go and be with her grandmother. So Ramona was talking about the fact that Leah had not texted her yet and she just felt some type of way about it. And I'm just like, Ramona, you knew she was going to go see her grandmother. So why are you being like this? So Ramona and the ladies all get a group text from Leah. And Leah informs him that on her way to see her grandmother, her grandmother passed away that morning. I was like, oh my God, that's terrible. And when I was watching that scene, I did cry because it just reminded me of my grandmother when she passed away on New Year's Day um, of 2013. So I remember like it was yesterday, my mom and I, New Year's Eve, we spent the day with my grandmother up until my mom went to work. And then when my mom went to work, I went back home. I stayed at home until she got off of work. When she got off work, we went back to my, we were going to go back over to my grandmother's house and we were going to stay with her the rest of the night until we went home. So when we got to the house, the ambulance was there and they told us, you know, with the ambulance, it was hospice. They said if we called them, they would come to the house. They wouldn't turn on the sirens or anything. So we didn't hear that. So when we got there, we just saw the lights on the, on the ambulance lit up. And we went into the house and my aunt was there. My aunt who actually currently lives in the house. Now she was there and she was like, you know, she was fine. But then at a certain point, she just, you know, it, you know, it went downhill. So they called the ambulance. And when the ambulance got there, they took her to the hospital. And my mom and I were in the emergency room with her. And I remember the doctor coming in and the doctor just told us that at that point it was nothing they could do. And you could look at her body and you could actually see the cancer. Like you could actually see it. And he touched her and she would wince. And at that point, and you know, when we got into the emergency room, she was non-responsive. Like, like I told her, I'm sorry, you guys. Like I told her to open her eyes just so I could see her one more time. I asked her just like, big mama, open your eyes for me. And she was trying to open her eyes for me, but she just, she couldn't. And, you know, I, we, I was holding her hand and I, and I felt her squeeze my hand. So I knew she could hear me, but she was deteriorating at that point. And at that time, we were in the emergency room for hours at that point. We had got there at the emergency room around, um, it was 10 o'clock because my mom got off work at nine, we got to the house at 9.30. So it was 10 o'clock when we got to the hospital. They weren't able to get her into a room until after midnight. And at that point they were just making her comfortable. Oh God. And so New Year's Day came and she was, you know, she was still here, but at that, at a certain point, she just really stopped. She really became unresponsive. Um, so I know what Leah's going through, but the thing that I will say for Leah is, and much like myself, I have nothing but great memories of my grandmother. So I don't think about her in that hospital bed with cancer. I think about the memories that I have of her from my childhood on up. I even have a, me a funny memory of her. <laughs> And it was when she was in a hospital with the cancer, but she was she was semi lucid. Like I have a funny memory about her. So 
my family, I wasn't there when this happened, but my family told me when I got back to the hospital, because I actually had class one night. So I went to class, <laughs> and this, she had this African doctor, and she wasn't eat like, prior to her passing, she had literally stopped eating food. She was not, we would try to feed her, she wouldn't eat anything. So this doctor prescribed her some THC, some THC pills, and when she got that THC in her, she ate, and she she was unfiltered to begin with it. But in this at this time, she was completely unfiltered. My fan was like Jerome. She called, she said she was a career college student. I was like, Are you serious? You said that, big mama. She said, No, I didn't. I said, I believe you said it. And I told her, um, surprise, surprise to you, I just applied for graduation, so I need you to get well because you come to my graduation. And she, she was just shy of my graduation, honest. Actually, she was shy of my graduation by a few months. <clears throat> she passed away New Year's Day and I graduated from college with my bachelor's August 16th, 2013. But I know she saw me, I know she's proud of me. And I think that's what Leah should take with herself as well, that her grandmother loved her and that her grandmother was absolutely proud of her. So Ramona, that text message you wanted to send, girl that lacked any kind of empathy. I'm glad Lou was there to tell you don't send that text message. So then Ebony talks to the ladies about her situation and the fact that her grandmother and her mother are all she has. And that's interesting because my grandmother, although I have a big family my grandmother and my mother were all that i had that i knew i could depend on because i can't depend on my nope nope we're not gonna talk about them so then she says that she may have a sister and that she wants to explore this opportunity which definitely go for it so heather takes her you know takes the point to where she wants to apologize to ebony for what she said about that you know um she's um very articulate she says she meant to say eloquent and then Ramona's like, oh, please keep it if you're going to preach. Ramona, shut up. But um, Ebony accepted her apology. So let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys, next up, let's talk about Ramona. Not much in this scene with Ramona. So Ramona's meeting up with this real estate broker that she knows through Sonia. So I guess Ramona now wants to go into real estate. Sorry, you guys. Sorry, you guys. Um, a blue alert just came through. You know, I've never heard, I've heard of a silver alert. I've heard of the amber alert. But I've never heard of a blue alert. What is a blue alert? The curiosity is going to kill me. I want to know what a blue alert is. How many alerts are there? Oh crap. We'll look it up in a minute. Actually, we can look it up on my watch. Sorry, you guys. I'm just curious. So don't be mad at me. Don't be mad at me, you guys. Don't be mad. Hey Siri, what's a blue alert? Here's some information. The National Blue Alert Act of 2013 is a bill that was introduced in the United States House of Representatives of the 113th United States Congress on January 4th. The bill instructs the, the Department of Justice to create a National Blue Alert communication system on the direction of a national color coordination. The system would spread information, important information about law enforcement officers hurt or killed in the line of duty in an attempt to make catching the perpetrators easier oh wow oh it makes sense now we ain't gonna say what i was gonna say but it makes sense now so an officer was killed yeah and they're trying to find a suspect the perpetrator which is a 43 year old white male that is bald with a green shirt with the green they just say a green shirt with camo pants so if you're in Texas, be on the lookout. I'm not. I'm just keeping it real with you. If you kill somebody, 
it ain't got nothing. I'm, I'm sorry to the person that died, but it ain't got nothing to do with me. I value my life. I mind my business. My, here's the thing for you guys. Minding your business is free. But catching the fade. Catching the fade or a bullet. Yeah, that costs something. A bullet costs you your life. And a fade costs you some fingers and a fist maybe. But yeah, um, where we at? Ramona. So she wants to be a part of that real estate company. And he tells her it's very competitive. And she's like, I'm, you know, I'm very competitive myself. So then they start talking about, you know, what you can and cannot say when it comes to a house. I didn't know that you couldn't say master bedroom anymore. I didn't know that. But when you go and look at apartments, they'll tell you this is now. I don't know if this is a, a if this is a thing in New York, because here in Texas, they still say master bedroom They You can't say bachelor pad. You can't say his and her bathroom. I was like, this is going to be hard for Ramona because Ramona is completely uncouth. But the guy says that he'll set up some open houses for her. I'm like, oh, OK, let's move on. All right, you guys, next up, let's discuss Leah. Oh, my God, I left my charger, too, didn't I? Oh, God, I got to go back and get my charger for my computer. I got to go find that. And then I got to find. OK. So Leah, she's at her boxing gym. You guys remember the boxing gym she went to last season with Tinsley. And she's meeting up with Ebony and she is meeting up with Lady Morgan. So, so um, Ebony asked Leah, you know, how was the service? She says it was nice. I mean, it's a church, it's a, it's a home going service. So, you know, I know they say it's a celebration of life. But it's still a sad occasion because it's still a sad, oh, there go rocks. She's laughing at me. Um, it's a sad occasion, you guys. Like, very sad occasion. But I know we, you know, we celebrate the person's life. I do know that. Mm. So then Sonya shows up as well. And Sonya, the way you was jabbing at that man, jab, jab, jab. That's what you need to do to the girls. Like, that's what you need to do when it comes to Ramona and Lou. Like, whenever they come at you sideways or anything, hit them with an uppercut. Hit them with a left hook. Hit them with a left hook. Hit them with a right hook. Like, what's that song? Hit them with a left hook. Hit them with a jack. Hit them with an uppercut. Kick him in his ass. That's ludicrous, isn't it? That's ludicrous. But yeah, that's what you need to do. But let's move on. guys we're gonna end the episode with ebony so we see all the ladies they're out voting for president biden and you know who <laughs> you know that gave me the same anxiety oh god that gave me the anxiety that i felt back in january <clears throat> well this november why did i say january you know what i'm thinking about the riot they gave me the same anxiety that i had last november watching that election because, like I told you guys in the Hot Topics last year, I stayed up all night, election night, just looking at that. Like, is it, are the numbers going to change? Like, one minute, you know who went up. I was like, oh, my God, no. Like, please don't give us another four years of this idiot. And then this idiot is talking about, oh, God, and he's talking about running in 2024. Oh, God. Oh, my God. You guys, if he runs again, let's do the same thing that we did last year again to him. Let's do that again to him, please. We don't ever need to see him again. Since the Republicans did not do what they should have done. You know, I think these Republicans have literally forgot what happened. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So everyone is showing up to Ebony's. You guys remember, she invited them to the party for the election. So everyone showed up with the exception of Ramona. Ramona has an excuse as to why she can't come. She's afraid that of riots. <coughs> How did you feel about <coughs> January 6th? How did you feel about that, Ramona? Were you afraid of that? 
Like, how did you feel about the Capitol riots? Just saying. Girl, just go ahead and say you support you know who. Um, Luann showed up as JFK. She asked Leah how she doing, and Leah says she's keeping herself busy. So then we also find out that they're going to have a party the next day, and Ebony's hosting it. I'm like, oh, God. Is this going to be a black girl event? I believe so. Like, I'm here for you, Ebony, with the sister soldiers. I'm here for you. You know, you one of us, but... I'm going to need Ebony to get a different, a second season so that she can showcase who she is outside of trying to educate these women on black stuff. Just all I'm saying. Um, Leah, your dog, Angel, she's a terror. Kind of like her owner, huh? So Ramona FaceTimes the ladies and they ask her, are you going to come to Ebony's party tomorrow? She says, oh yeah, I'm coming. You know, I feel like it's safe to come back. To, I feel like it's safe to be in New York now. You were never worried about any riots. Let's keep it real. You just didn't want to go to that party because you don't, I mean, we all know who you support, so it's not a big deal. We know you support you know who. Why you support you know who, I don't know why. But you support you know who nonetheless. So Sarah calls Ramona a hypocrite. I'm like, exactly. She's a true hypocrite. And then we have drunk Sonya. I'm like, oh, God, not drunk Sonya. Now, in this scene, I will say Sonya was speaking some real facts. Is she speaking the things that I think about Ramona? Because I do remember seeing this photo surfacing on, you know, the uh, surfacing on Twitter, Instagram, like on some of the Housewives pages. I do remember this surf circulating, this picture that Ramona posted of she and Ebony. And I was like, girl, you trying to play, you trying to make people believe that you're not a racist. So it's like, here I am with my, you know, have you guys ever saw that meme of SpongeBob, Patrick, and, um, and Squidward, and Squidward's in the middle of SpongeBob and Patrick, and it's like, you know, when I'm with my girls, it was so funny. I can't remember how that meme, it was the, it was the funniest meme. So it's basically, you know, you, if you guys watch SpongeBob and Patrick, you know, Squidward cannot stand Patrick and Spongebob right but in this picture they're hope they're they're like this and Squidward is in the middle smiling so it's like you know one way with your girls you know you with your friends your fake friends y'all besties and stuff but behind you know when y'all get home and stuff you can't stand them you talking about them that's who Ramona is I'm not saying that Ramona can't stand Ebony I'm not saying that she can't stand Brashawn which they introduced they talked about Brashawn <clears throat> I wonder when we're gonna meet Brashawn but yeah, Sonia thinks it's an ulterior motive. And I'm like, exactly. She doesn't want people to believe that she's racist. That's all she's doing. But that's it, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about the episode. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. Share this video. Um, share this video. Like this video. Leave your comments. Subscribe. <clears throat> hit that notification bell button. Until the next one, stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wear your mask socially distance and I'll see you guys later and if you guys don't wear a mask be safe and whatever you do and be blessed and I'll catch you guys later bye guys